little sagging pants. What? Some Africans think they're better than us. It's, it's a systematic thing. Like, we're all taught to just hate each other. Hundreds of years of propaganda don't just go away. And I think the older African generation picked up on, like, anti-blackness. You can thank Harvard professor Evelyn Brooks Higginbotham, yes, fellow Evelyn, for coining the term respectability politics. I can't believe I have to say this, but it's time to tell your African parents that Black Lives Matter. So how do we even start this conversation, right? Because screaming academic vocabulary from Professor Higginbotham isn't really gonna get you anywhere, right? What's that? Um, like if my mom would make a comment, you know, in passing or something like that, maybe over dinner, but like, hey mom, that's, you know, that's not right. And I would try to explain respectfully why that's not right, you know, and how that's not fair to, you know, judge someone that you haven't met yet. The same way you don't wanna be judged you know, before someone has a chance to actually meet and interact with you. If someone from my community says something ignorant, I'm just like, mm, no, <laughs> and here's why. <laughs> or, you know, we shouldn't say that about pe other people, uh, or we wouldn't like it if they were saying this type of stuff about us, or like, you know, it's better if we're united. Any instances where I try and change their thinking, I only ask questions to make them unravel their thought process. Uh, I'm not a big uh, advocate of trying to argue with someone. I just keep asking why or how come or explain that a little bit more to me until they realize that what they're saying actually has no basis. I usually do three things. Number one, I non-verbally express my disapproval. It could be a head shake a furrowed brow. It could be that uncomfortably high-pitched sound you make when you're trying to disagree with your parents, but you can't do so confidently because as a child you were taught that parents are above reprimand or criticism. Do you ever talk about race issues with your parents or like older African folks? Um, yeah, actually we, I, we do. Like my dad is really into the news and stuff and we have a pretty open dialogue where I'm, we discuss our opinions pretty openly, sometimes heated arguments because they're all very opinionated people. Actually, I think I find myself talking about race with my friends and with my younger sister, but when it comes to talking to my parents, I feel like I hit a wall sometimes and I keep trying, but it, sometimes I feel like it's not really going anywhere or that they feel like I may be a little bit too radical. My parents are really progressive, so they're really easy to talk to and to like, convince of my narrative or like it's easy to sit them down and be like okay this is what's going on through my eyes this is the world i'm living in so i'm really blessed and fortunate on that aspect the way they raised me my brother and my sister was to respectfully challenge i guess respectfully challenge authority which even included them so that's kind of different from i guess other nigerians upbringing so whenever they would say something i would always try to push back a little bit number two and this is weird to have to say, but I state that I'm black. When you talk about those black kids, you're talking about me, you're talking about your children. I don't know, I don't know. I feel like sometimes they feel like they're immune to it. I don't know if you just like hit a certain age as a black person and you're just like, whatever, you just try not to think about it and block it out, but that's the impression I'm getting with some of the some of the older Africans I know where they're just like, well, just mind your business, go to work and don't make any trouble. Like, you know, this doesn't have to affect your day-to-day -day life. Whereas like my friends, me, my little sister, when we talk about it, we're like, no, this is very, like, it's very intrusive to our day-to-day -day life. I don't see how it's not the same for you guys. It's like, it's sometimes it gets really sad because they just, it's like they've almost given up, I want to say. So we just talk about what's happened and just like my parents will express their disappointment, but they're not really sure how to change anything. So sometimes it gets really sad. My mom does not like to talk about anything political at all. She's like, I'm, I'm past, I don't want to, that's a bummer. I think there's still kind of a, a kind of a disconnect. Like it's, it's other black people, not really me. When you're from an African nation, a majority black country, the concept of needing or having to identify as your race is not as relevant or as necessary. I get that. 
But what you're not gonna do is come all the way to the US, have kids, and those kids are now black in America, and then you talk trash about black folks? Not on my watch. And number three, and I do this for many different scenarios, many different conversations and topics, not just this one. I just ask for clarification and let people explain themselves. And then you just watch them weave a tangled web of weave and lies and they so confused, girl. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. And from there, you can go on to have a conversation using academic vocabulary like respectability politics or not. You can put that off to next time because there will be a next time, unfortunately. But at least now, they know that you are not the one. All right? Allyship, okay? Umoja, all right? So what does it feel like to be black in the US? Mm, man, that's a pretty heavy question. Damn, I hope I don't cry. Um, if you're isolated, it, I mean, it sucks. There, there are stereotypes and stigmas that I have to fight through. And so I have to be very community focused in a world that's very, um, in a country that's very individualistic. So you have consciousness of both the pride of being American as a, you know, a member of a population of 300 million, but also um, understanding some of the struggles and challenges and opportunities of 13% of the population. It's hella hard, um, especially when you combine it with the intersections of being bigger bodied, of being disabled, of being a woman, of <laughs> shit, being queer, just everything. It's just, it hadn't got any better. It just, the, the hatred got different. So, um, it's just frustrating that so many people had to die just for hatred to just be different and not just be over, so. Even if you feel like it's useless, every time your parents say something, like every time they use the term Akata or anything like that, just be like, no, I don't think that's true. Like, no, mom, like, don't say that. That's not the case. Like, we're all black at the end of the day. Like, we get treated the same way, whether we're from Africa, we were born here. Do it to the best of your abilities, even if you have to like laugh, laugh through it. Because ultimately, it's our responsibility to make sure that the people around us and the people we associate ourselves with are um, informed and intelligent. I think it definitely comes back to like, self-intellectualism, shouts out to Malcolm X. Um, definitely teaching ourselves and being an influence on our parents. And a lot of times our parents are stoic AF, like they ain't moving on anything they think about. They don't care what you say, what they say is right. And you just be like, yes ma'am. And so. With that being said, energy is very finite. And if they are not budging, save yourself, save yourself the trouble and put that energy towards somebody else you know who just needs a little bit more schooling or protest your like your own protesting or just whatever you can do that feels like there's a there's a positive outcome and you can make a difference the idea of, of making people very aware that what separates us is super small and what connects us is so much bigger is on everybody um, so first generation kids for sure like yes definitely you know teach your kids from here on out, just like you're trying to teach your kids not to be you know, homophobic or you know, Islamophobic or whatever, teach your kids like, no, this person is gonna have a similar experience to you for whatever reason. So don't separate yourself from them. Reach out to anybody and everybody, especially if they look like you. So, you are an African child. And your very African parents just said something questionable at best. Don't let it go unchecked. It's time to tell our African parents that Black Lives Matter. Thanks so much for watching. In the comments, let me know if you've ever felt this way or not, if you've experienced this. If you agree or if you disagree, it's okay. Share this video with somebody who needs it. Tell your folks I said hi, wash their mouth, and I will see you on the internet somewhere. Bye.